Greetings, brothers and sisters. Brother Tomasio here. And <clears throat> we're going to do part two of the teaching on the man child and why I believe that uh, Bishop Coffey is the man child of Revelation 12, verse 5 specifically. Now, uh, if you're Catholic like me, <clears throat> We were always taught the man-child of Revelation 12 was Mary and Jesus. The woman clothed with the son gives birth to the man-child. I mean, and we didn't even think much further. But the problem comes in with this is a uh, future event. This is not a past event. This is a future event that is happening and unfolding uh, through John. Uh, this was after Jesus resurrected from the dead. So <clears throat> he already won. So this is a, this is a, another event that is going to happen. A, a somewhat of a, uh, it's the kickoff of the judgments. So it's, it's kicked off in a formal way through the presentation of the Lamb of God who was slain who had eyes all around his head, horns around his head, seven eyes, seven horns, <clears throat> meaning he could see everyone and hear uh, everyone, everywhere. And it mentions, you know, in the sea and under the earth and all these other places, uh, joining in to worship the Lamb of God who is worthy to open the seven scrolls and unseal them. So the seven uh, scrolls are the judgment of God on the earth that is um, rebelled against God. So, <clears throat> and specifically the humans and the demons they seem to be the ones that are going to get the brunt of the judgment and chastisement, although the animals who are here are going to feel it, for sure. But God doesn't seem to be as much angry with the animals as he is with humans and demons and Satan. So, <clears throat> the, the uh, man-child is mentioned in Isaiah and Ezekiel, and it refers to a King David type, uh, someone who is going to be under Jesus during the reign of peace on earth. The man-child will be the Pope, so to speak, of, of, the, of the day, but he, he's the man-child, he's not the Pope, but it, can he... Is the Pope necessarily the man-child? No, not necessarily. Would it be a good idea for the Pope to be the man-child? Um, uh, absolutely. So could the next Pope be Bishop Coffey? Yes, he would be eligible, but they typically vote for a Cardinal. So it would be extraordinary for Bishop Coffey to be uh, elected the next Pope. <clears throat> But if you read Revelation 12 carefully, it says that the man-child was taken to heaven. Uh, she gave birth to the man-child who was taken to heaven. She gave birth. She was wailing aloud in pain, really. So we know that's not Jesus and Mary's birth. And this was happening in the heavens. So this is a spiritual battle here going on in the heavens, the woman, the dragon, the man-child. And the best I can tell is that the woman represents Mary, of course, the church, of course, and really the pro-life movement, ready to give birth with the dragon ready to devour the child. That is a, a, a clear attack on humanity, specifically a, a newborn baby. So is this a papal election, this birth of a man-child, of the man-child? Um, maybe. So, but something happens where the church 
pro-life movement, Our Lady, give birth to this great leader destined to rule the nations with an iron rod. That's pretty significant, okay? Uh, Bishop Coffey's been to sea, out to sea many times. He's trained with Marines. He doesn't get old. I mean, uh, great, still great physical condition. Travels all the time. His schedule's unbelievable. <clears throat> and he has time for everybody. So he's the man for the job. There's no question about it. And he's not afraid to mix it up. He's been arrested before for standing up for pro-life in the streets of Philadelphia, for example. <clears throat> so he's been with our military. He was boot camp during 9-11. He's been around some powerful men and women. So I don't, I don't know anyone more qualified to lead right now God's kingdom, to lead God's kingdom on earth. And that would be Bishop Coffey. And there's other great leaders we have out there, but this one man-child is destined. He's destined to rule the nations. And the only way he's going to rule the nations is in the kingdom that's coming. So that's not this kingdom. His kingdom's no more this world than Jesus' kingdom was. But he has to be born into this world and live in this world in order to be part of the next world in that capacity. So that's why we have someone, such a great leader as Bishop Coffey amongst us, because uh, the church is still in the, in the battle. The church hasn't quit, you know, and so <clears throat> the Blessed Mother pro-life movement has given birth to a great leader he's here folks and everyone agrees with me no one disagrees with me other than the fact that we weren't taught about a man child we don't even know what it is a man child that's got to be jesus no jesus is the god man he's he's not the man child but bishop coffee is a child in his heart if you know him he's uh he He's out there with the young people and sports, especially colleges. Um, <clears throat> he has, you know, great, a great uh, visibility. He's been on Mother Angelica and other programs. He gets interviews all the time. And he goes on cruises and everywhere you can imagine the guy's doing it. So, and he's visiting the, vet the veterans in the hospitals across the country consistently uh, doesn't ever seem to get sick <laughs> so anyway the point is he's a sinner like you and me but God has a special calling for him and so his apostolic anointing as bishop combined with his uh, being named captain in our military the Navy so you have two distinct um, authorities there you know from God and from from man and so we have a, a very special person with us Bishop Coffey now if the man child's here it says that you know he's going to be taken to heaven because the dragon's going to try to devour him so that is you know yet to happen obviously he's still with us so, but this is one example of a rapture in which the man-child is taken to heaven. Does that mean that all those who are with him at that time are going up with him? Um, maybe. So this is an example of a rapture. You know, he's going to be taken to heaven. How that exactly happens, we don't know. But it, obviously there's going to be an attack some type of an attack and it, it makes sense because he's pro-life he's right there on the front lines at the abortion clinics and that is the movement that is getting more violent we heard of a fire bombing last night at a pro-life center in buffalo so anyway keep keep him in, in your prayers and uh but at this point like i'm saying 
this is really very critical times and to have a King David with us is a beautiful thing but his kingdom is not of this world he's no threat to anybody here um, as far as politically you know but he is definitely with us that's why you don't see him bashing the church and all this stuff he's that that's not why he's here he's here to lead the pro-life church into the kingdom that's coming very shortly and he will have his own staff clearly you know under Christ under him and that's where Revelation 20 comes in where it talks about we will rule with him during the thousand years so that's coming folks we are so close to that it's so clear <clears throat> but you have to have faith and when you hear that voice saying come up here you can't be like oh my gosh uh, hold on a second i gotta do something no you gotta be ready to, to go at the sound of the trumpet that's how you have to be living right now and that's important. So, if Pope Francis resigns, which they're talking about, he's apparently, you know, thinking about it, um, they will have a papal election. Would it be a good idea to elect Bishop Coffey? Yes, it would. Uh, why? Because we need a pro-life leader right now, because you can see with Roe Wade in trouble, this is where you need leadership. You know, to be able, you don't want everybody pro-abortion to panic, but you want them to be converted, you know, and it's okay. It's not the end of the world that, you know, you can't abort your children any longer. Uh, we will make sure, you know, that every child has a home. That comes with it, you know. So that's, that's why you need leaders to be able to address it because they will make sure everything is being addressed so all right so anyway uh the eucharist seven eyes seven horns all seeing all knowing uh and this is um throughout the world through the eucharist in the catholic church at least where the everybody is united for the lamb of god at every mass regardless of what country you're in so that's what's going on it's it is really the mass and bishop coffee when he's taken to heaven in revelation 12 then we pick up revelation 4 or 5 where the lamb of god because bishop coffee obviously will be a part of that ceremony as will anyone that's raptured be part of that ceremony so anyway, uh, main thing is stay in God's word, pray and be ready. Uh, pray and be ready. In the meantime, you occupy the best way you can by loving your neighbor. Keep yourself busy <clears throat> loving your neighbor until he comes. Thanks.